I've always been a believer that, that good sound design is half of the entertainment value of a film. The sound has an emotional aspect to it. And sound, for many years, has taken a back seat to the visuals. Uh, sound has happened to be an add-on to it. Uh, not at Disney. Walt, at that time, was only making shorts or cartoons. And everything that had to go on the screen had to be generated. There was no real car or real horse or real uh, anything. But the effects are in the hands of a genius like Jimmy McDonald, who could create in his mind and be able to go on a stage and know what a relatively innocuous instrument could create, given the right circumstances and the right manipulation with a microphone. Walt gave us the time to build them and go around and just, just build things. And anything that we wanted, we could make. We used to have to do everything at one time. And we used to have to run the cartoon. We'd have the fellows with the sound effects. We had the people with the voices. We had the orchestra going. And everybody had to synchronize. One, two, three, four. All they were all musicians working for me, so they could follow those beats, and when it came to a certain number of beats, they would go, ah, or they would go bang, or they would go this, or they would pop one of these pop guns, you know, and they would always fit. They portrayed the reality of the object you saw on the screen without you becoming conscious of it. And that's a great compliment. Jimmy had a unique ability uh, when, when doing sound design for a cartoon or a feature. He had a sense of magic, a sense of timing, uh, a sense of wonder that he could bring to something. He worked on the effects stage. He worked on the orchestra stage at the music department because his beginnings were in the musical department as a drummer. And of course, that gave him uh, an incredible sense of timing, which is so important to any sound effects guy. Sometimes we would go out and actually record uh, a wind or a, a rain, but more likely it was something that was created at the studio. Oh, 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 I'm unraveling! He built a wooden barrel and drove literally thousands of nails into that thing. And then a couple hands full of Mexican peas. And by rotating it slowly, you'll get the rain sound. They had to be able to have surf and rain in real time on the set as he needed it. Today, we don't think of things like that. It's one of those old classics that he used all the time. You look at some of his other classics, like the Bambi fire. This is just bamboo, and we use it for fire. It comes off very well for fire. We just uh, keep twisting it. He could manipulate that and watch it to film, and it was very believable. It didn't need anything else. Send Evan Rude back as soon as you need help. In The Rescuers. Evan Root was a little dragonfly, but the charm he gave that little character with that sound, that classic, classic sound, it would have been nothing without that. He made that with a wooden dowel and some dental dam, I mean, and a, and a rubber hose. He was the kind of guy that could take a pile of junk and turn it into something brilliant. Jimmy took some old Model T brake drums and took sandpaper and grinding wheels to those things until he had a chromatic scale and a complete set. We've used them whenever we needed chimes and clarion and in Snow White and uh, special weddings and whatnot. So then I'll... His coconut horses were another example. I mean, he always grumbled about the fact that everybody in this town did three-legged horses with their coconut shells. And Jimmy prided himself in the fact that all of his horses were four-legged horses. One of his classic effects was born out of the True Live Adventure series. If you go back and look at those things, you think, well, those were deep, rich frog crunch. Well, they were a, a coffee can with rawhide stretched over the top and a cord sticking out of the top, and he played it with a violin bow. When I've been sent out for the studio from time to time to publicize new pictures, I would come in 
especially up in Canada, in some of the little towns where they do not have electronic surveillance, they'd want to know what was in here. And I'd say, well, I have, I have bears, I have horses. And, you know, they'd look at me like, uh, hmm, got to get a white coat for this fella. But anyway, they wanted to see it. So I would take out the lamp chimney and they'd say, what is that? I said, this is a bear. <laughs> In the love bug, I'm sure there were many effects that were used, natural, that were recorded when they were shooting in Northern California. But there was always a situation where Jimmy had to add a little something special. There was a scene where Herbie's wheel was to come off and bounce down the hill. Well, if that had been tracked with realistic sound, it wouldn't have been funny, it wouldn't have been charming. And yet what Jimmy did with it turned it into something that was very nice. He looked at the scene, and there again, he decided that realistic sounds would not work for something like this. He took a balloon, and he began by hitting the balloon with a drumstick, and, you know, as he played around with that, he felt like that it, it might work better if he hit it from the inside. So he put different things inside the balloon, ended up being BBs. And he tried one and then several, and he became enamored with the sound that the BBs made, not only bouncing around inside, but when they rolled around in there as well. And especially when he gave it a quick spin and a thump, Voila, that effect was born, and it was a, it's a classic little effect. I always got a big kick out of uh, David uh, Tomlinson getting squirted by Herbie when he showed his displeasure with Mr. Tomlinson. And you hear this squirt of sound. He looked down, and here's his foot just coated with uh, some black heavy oil. I know that all the sounds of Herbie and throughout the picture, the horns and the oil squirting, were made by him. And he did a beautiful job of it. The sound is very important in creating the character. Herbie is a great example of that, where that car had to come to life. It had to be a, a creature that was endearing. The soulful horn effects that Herbie would emanate when he was sad or happy or excited gave that Herbie 53 a personality, and that's what brought it alive, and that's what maybe why people related to it so much, that it, that it had a soul. Jimmy put the horns on little rheostats, and he would play with the, the pitch of them, and as they would, it would quiver and talk and, and sigh and, and sound happy. Well, those are clever things that he did. And if you're going to give it any kind of life, you got to humanize it. And so he did that humanizing with all of the sounds that normally the car would make, even when it would fall apart. It fell apart in a delightful, charming way. <laughs> He used it discreetly, and he would not let it be abused. He knew when enough was enough, and he knew when too much was destroying what he had. Those qualities were natural qualities to the old filmmakers and to the old technicians. Music was always important to films. But Jimmy McDonald made sound effects important to films.